بینرانی خوشویست بخیر بینو بو برنامه که دیکه راویج لن برنامه راویجش دا بردوام ده بین لسر گفتگو کردن و قصه کردن ده گل برز جانت بیل که نوسری کی بخوی نوسری کی ناسراوی امریکایی و بتای بتی لسر مسئله لعنی کمالایتی اکولوژی و نظوری کار کرد و بتای بتی لسر هر وها دوستی که نزیکی ماری بوکچین که مفکری که گوری امریکایی بو کاری کردو برای زیان به ماوی یک دو سال را بردو دا چندین جار سفری کردو با روش آوای کردستان لو برنامه دا به تایبتی لسر او مسئله او سفرانه قصد کن You are welcome again to my show During the past two, three years so you have been traveling to the Rojava or Western Kurdistan I would like to know first that how was the idea of visiting Rojava came about when you started for your first visit there? Uh, it was initiated uh, by um, uh, two Kurds, by Dila Dirik and Davis Chimen, to form a, an academic delegation. They invited several people uh, to participate it was in 19. For, um, it was for the, uh, in 2014. This, it was December of 2014. Yeah. So they invited, uh, wanted to put together an academic delegation of people who would come, who would visit, and observe, and come back and write and tell the world yeah. about what was happening there. Yeah. And I'm not an academic, yeah. and I actually was not originally invited. But one of the people who was on it said, "Why don't you invite Janet Beale too?" And so I. And so but I, when so you say went. when you say you are not an academic, you mean uh, you're not teaching in any I'm university? I'm not a professor. No. Oh, yes. No. Yeah. Which is different from being an intellectual. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. yeah not a teacher. And then uh, how was the uh, the combination of this uh, delegation that s started? How was... Um, there were was Americans? There were, there were, no, no, I think uh, there were a couple of Americans. Yeah. Um, um, David Graeber and Jeff David, Miley, who yeah. are b both living in the UK, yeah. but they're Americans. David Graeber is a very known uh, professor. Yes, uh, yes, LSA, yes, yes, yes. At, uh, at yes. the London School, yes. yes. And he's written a lot about, a lot of important articles about Rojava. Yeah. Yes. And, and then the, yeah. just to explain the, all the, I mean, very in detail tell the travel there. Okay, yeah. well, we um, crossed the Tigris at Samalka, yeah. and with the little red... The from little southern Kurdistan? Fr yes, from mm. south Kurdistan, yeah. on the little red metal boat across yeah. the, the... This very seemed like a very small river, yeah. but it was a huge step, yeah. because, um, yeah, we entered... We, uh, the Asayish greeted us, yeah. and, and we were escorted. It was it, this, of course, there's a war, it's a war situation. Yeah, so we had to, we were always had to stay together. Yeah. The, the, the organizers were very concerned that nobody w go off by themselves. Yeah. So that was fine. We, and we rode in vans yeah. um, around Rojava. We went to Derek. We went to the Paradise Restaurant in Derek. I think that was the first stop where we met Amina Ossi. Um, we went to, who was um, a P, well, the deputy foreign minister and the PYD person. Um, in Jizre. In Jizre. Jizre we, Canton. Oh, only in Jizre. Canton, this yes. This is before Tel Abyad. Yes. Yeah, so Jizre is separate from Kobani. Yes. We couldn't go that far. Yeah. Um, we went to Kamishlo, yeah. um, where we visited health centers. Uh, we visited. We visited a commune, a commune meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we visited uh, a cemetery for the martyrs. We visited Ronahi TV. Um, we went to, and we went. To, perhaps most movingly, we went to Serekaniya, yeah. um, which has not been rebuilt since uh, it successfully warded off the attacks of Al Nusra. Um, so there were bullet holes still in all the buildings and giant gaping holes, yeah. but the life seemed to return to normal. But we heard all the story about the, how Al Nusra attacked and how and how the YPG and YPJ had driven so had driven them out. Uh, from so the I mean the first uh, let's say uh, impression that you had about the management of the social life, the daily life. How was it? Um, and your first visit, I mean. Uh, the first visit, uh, yeah. yes. It was, it was very, very s low key, very small scale. I didn't get a sense that there's a big state there, which mm. there's actually not. It seemed to be, it seemed to be people managing themselves. For example, re I mentioned that in Bur in Murray Bookchin's ideas, he thought that citizens need to form assemblies. Yeah. In this, his ideas, libertarian municipalism. Well, there were assemblies. There, I, we, uh, in a neighborhood in Kamishlo, I visited an assembly where there were women as well as men participating. There were Arabs as well as Kurds participating, and it was wonderful to see. It looked like a town meeting in Vermont, where I came from, which also has citizen yeah. assemblies. Yes. Yeah. So, 
Yes. Yeah, and can continue, please. Yeah. When I visited, at, mm -hmm. when I visited the Ashaish yeah. um, school in yeah. Rimalan, uh, we came in and I gave them a big greeting from my friend Murray Bookchin, not knowing if they would even know who his name was. And of course, he's dead. I meant in, a, in an abstract sense. Yeah. And as we learned that they were studying democratic confederalism at this Asaish training school. Mm -hmm. And as I left, someone told me they had just been reading about Bookchin that morning, yeah. which was just very, of course. very astounding. Yeah. Yes. And, and, that yeah. It, it, yeah. and that the role of women, uh, I mean, uh, as you know, uh, even maybe in the mainstream, uh, let's say, media in the United States and in even Europe, so it's, uh, they call about the Kurdish women, uh, I mean, they are very brave in the fighting and things like that, but in reality, how did you, had, uh, did you have this expectation to see that uh, bearing in mind that there were no, I mean, tradition like that before in the area, uh, the role of women, how did you find it? We visited a, a YPJ barracks mm. where there was, we of course didn't go into a battlefield and didn't yeah, see any fighting, not, yes. but we were in a YPJ barracks where, where women wounded, wounded YPJ yeah. women were, and they talked about the importance of the ideas. They said they were fighting for gender equality and for democratic confederalism. They were not and they weren't interested, it was very, very good that, that, that they were able to fight and able to participate, but the most important thing was not picking up the gun, the important thing is the ideas, mm -hmm. and that's what they were fighting for, mm -hmm. and they emphasized this repeatedly, that it's the new society that they're trying to defend. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was very, very impressive. So the social contract, which was, as you know, it was uh, uh, agreed upon between different uh, cantons, from these th three different cantons, which now evolved into a kind of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, mm, uh, another form of uh, let's mm -hmm. the management. Mm -hmm. uh, how was uh, it? Uh, because uh, for your, I mean, from your standpoint of view, I mean, the content of this social contract. Because, uh, as you know, we have, uh, let's say, in those uh, geography in different countries, you have, uh, let's say, constitutions and things. But in this social contract, I think there was very thing which was uh, very modern for the. Uh, it, it's a question of comparison, yes? Yes, I, well, I think the, com the principles of democratic confederalism are included yeah. in the social contract, which, by the way, is, a co uh, is not called a constitution because a constitution is what a state has. Yes. The co social contract is with the society as yeah. a whole, they're, because in Rojava they're against the state, as yeah. Bukshin was, as Ojalan is. Yeah. So um, these principles of gender equality and inclusiveness are there. And I was very surprised to learn that the place is not officially called Rojava because that's a Kurdish word yeah. and they're trying to include all the different ethnicities. Yeah. So it's just called the three cantons. Yes. Yes. And, and um, there are three official languages, Kurdish, Arabic, and, and uh, Assyriac, Assyrian. And um, uh, I'm very, it's very impressive that, for example, in the, uh, that, that so many different aspects of human rights, international human rights, points are included in Rojava's social contract. In the United States, we're very proud of our Bill of Rights. Yeah, of ten, course. Ten, of course. An enumeration of 10 different rights. Of course. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. But, th it, but much has evolved in the story of human rights since the, that was created in the late 1700s. And these human rights points of, of, of so many different treaties and agreements internationally, as it's evolved over time, are included in the social contract of Rojava. I find that very moving and very stirring. Yeah. Uh, but uh, how long it, uh, it took you this first? Uh, uh, ten days. Uh, ten, ten days. days yes. There. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, what was other things? What was the things that you were not expecting to see? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I had never witnessed a revolution before, yeah. even though I worked with Murray yeah. on writing the book about the third revolution, the <laughs> yeah. histories of revolution, yeah. it was all abstract to me, it was all pages of history. Here was a revolution that really happened and I was witnessing it. It was the most exciting possible thing. I'd never seen women in arms. Yeah. I'd never see, I've never been on a battlefield. I never heard uh, explosions going off in the distance because a war is going on. So for me, there were many new and amazing and profound things. I've lived a very comfortable life yeah, mm. compared to what, what, what people were experiencing uh, there. But I mean, uh, this is just, you're just talking about the positive sides. Yes. I mean, did you have anything that you could not, uh, I mean, approve of? 
Yeah, um, it's, I, I have to say the one thing, my one uh, concern is about the relationship between what was then called the democratic, the, the transitional government yeah. that's and now called, I think, the Democratic Self-Administration. It consists of the Legislative Council and the Executive Council. My concern is what is the connection between these and the council system, the, the, the communes, the neighborhood council, the district council, and the, and the MGRK. Yeah. I don't, there's, there are two different systems. There's the council system, and then there's this, basically what seems like a traditional, potentially a traditional parliamentary system. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand how they're connected, mm -hmm. and my concern is how they are connected, because if it's truly to be a democracy, they need to be connected. Yeah. So, and I'm sure there's an explanation or, um, or a, a, an explication of that that maybe I just haven't heard yet, but um, uh, you can take it up with them, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, possibly next time. because yes. yes. And then uh, when uh, when you came back, I mean, this is uh, it was in 19 uh, sorry 2014. Yes. When you came back, and then after that, so you have been there again, yes. Yes. Second trip. When was, was it? it um, uh, October of 2015. Yes. I was invited to participate in the New World Summit. Yes. Organized by the New World Academy in the Netherlands. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jonas Stahl and Rene. Intermauer and some other people um, invited me to come to speak about Bookchin and democratic confederalism. So that was in Derek, but during that week, we also toured around various, yeah. various, many, some of the same places that I'd been to before. Um, but we was interesting to, 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 to go through it again yeah. and, and, and hear, hear, see a little bit about how the revolution had progressed. So what was the difference? I mean, what had happened? What was the uh, development that you saw um, comparing with your first trip? Yeah, I th well, I think that the, um, the, the the war had continued. Then yeah. it was much more on everyone's mind. There were more 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 security around, more Asayish, more yeah. soldiers around. That was that was very strong, yeah. very strong uh, presence. Um, but um, and and um, let's see, other issues were the f during the first trip. I had heard some women talking about an idi um, a genealogy mm -hmm. and expressing it in such a way that women seem to have a, a superior knowledge. Mm -hmm. The second trip, when they talked about genealogy, it was men and women are equal. Not, not, no, neither sex is superior, yes. but men and women are equal. And I mm -hmm. thought that was a very, very interesting change. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, so. Because uh, somewhere they say that you are a critic of eco-feminism. Yeah. Why? Um, well, it's ecofeminism in the United States. Yeah. yeah, turned into a form of mysticism. If you just relate it to the Rojava, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. It turned into this idea that women are superior. Yeah. Yeah, and have a superior knowledge of nature. Yeah. And I have a problem with that. I don't think. I think. I don't. I think generalizations about women are very, are very dangerous because yeah. they've been used to oppress them in the past. So I was actually very happy to see the second trip, the development to an idea that that the genders are equal. Yeah. So. Now, this uh, question of, uh, let's say, the struggle of uh, Kurdish people and the others who are asking for their rights, I mean, in the Rojava, it's not just involving the Kurds, but the others, the, uh, I mean, the uh, genius people who are living there. So it has been uh, really, if you look at the official policies of United States and the others, they are just talking about that they are very brave people, very courageous people against these barbaric Daesh there. But very hardly you hear anything about their rights. I mean, whether these people have a right, these people have the, uh, let's say, the right to manage their own life and things like that. How it will be? What is going to be, I mean, in the future, if the things going on like that? I mean, how it the Kurds be, could be trusting these policies by the United States and the West? No, yeah, that's, a, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. But I think that in, in, the, in the Western press, the only places I've heard the, the, the political system discussed is in the radical, the radical press. Mm -hmm. In the mainstream U.S. press, they don't talk about democratic confederalism. They don't talk about the, the importance of, of, of the system that the women are fighting for. They don't talk about ecology or the ethnic inclusiveness. They just talk about what good fighters they are and how effective they are against Daesh. Mm -hmm. uh, and, so, and the implication is that perhaps, you know, they, that, that, that would be, so that's an important alliance, but then the United States is not advocating that the Kurds be included in the Geneva talks. Yeah. So, p of course, because of Turkey. Yeah. And so it raises concerns that, that once again, the Kurds, once they are no longer useful, 
will be betrayed. And I deeply hope that that won't happen. And, but I think there's a lot of solidarity um, movements emerging now with the Kurds and pressure on governments. And there needs to be more to recognize the Kurds and to make sure that no betrayals take place. Yeah. And, and when I was there, both times, people said, we need your help. We need you to organize at home. And that's what all, some, many of us who have been there are trying to do. To, yeah. to help. Yeah. Uh, uh, now we see in the background some of your uh, graphic arts. Can you tell me a little, a little more? Because uh, when I look at these uh, uh, arts, it's a very, really interesting. I mean, uh, how it uh, projects in your mind, and then you can put it into this art piece. My favorite, my favorite subject of art is the human face and yeah. the human body. I yeah. find it endlessly interesting. And I love the faces of the people that I met in Rojava. There's so much character and expressiveness in their face of people who have this self-consciousness and this, this, the confidence and the courage to do what they're doing to build this new society. It was, it's endlessly fascinating to me. Yeah. And I love drawing them. I love making, paying, it's a way also of paying a visual tribute to them. Yeah. Um, but I try to, I try to, um, get some psychological depth into mm. my into my into my artwork because I'm very curious to know what goes on in their inner life and I try to see what I can find if I can find it expressed in their faces apart from your personal blog you just publicize it somewhere else or in some publications? Um, on, I had the, well, on Facebook for a while. I'm working on some new pieces now, and, yeah. I'm, and I'm hoping to put together enough to make a show or to... I also use them for fundraising. Yeah. So, for example, um, for WECFA, the yeah. Foundation of Free Women of Rojava, mm -hmm. I make them available. They still are, actually. Yeah. If anyone wants to purchase them, that donation goes to WECFA. Yeah. Okay? And yeah. so I'm going to uh, try to find new ways to fundraise with these new artworks that I'm making. So, when you came back from your uh, second trip, uh, then you have been uh, visiting different places in uh, I think even in United States and then in Europe can you tell me some about these meetings yes yeah. well it's interesting because I just published a biography of Murray Bookchin yeah right it's and called the title ecology or catastrophe e the eco life ecology and catastrophe ecology or, or catastrophe. catastrophe one or the other yes yes yeah the life of Bookchin mm. just published last year yeah so I need to go talk about my book yeah. but I'm also I've just been to Rojava so I talk about Rojava, it's, and so the two contribute it together, to yes. each other. Sometimes mm -hmm. pe people want to hear about Bookchin, sometimes people want to hear about Rojava, but I try to, I try to, they, it, it's, uh, the sum is, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it's bigger than the two things put together. Yeah. It's, it, 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 they, 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 they each enhances the importance of the other. Yeah. So it's been, I've been to Ireland, I've been to, uh, in the United States. Uh, um, uh, so in Ireland, I think you shared the, the panel with the Kurdish activist women? Yes. yes, it was a marvelous panel between myself yeah. talking about democracy, mm. Erjan Eboya mm. of the, the, the Mesopotamian eco ecology movement talking about ecology, and Aisha, I don't know her last name, yeah. the former uh, mayor uh, of uh, yes. talking about women. So yeah. it was the three, three pillars <laughs> yeah. of, of the ideology in one place. It was, yeah. it was really a wonderful, wonderful panel. Yeah. There was in the news recently that uh, in uh, Afrin, as you know, Afrin is uh, so-called disconnected with the other uh, two cantons, uh, that they have started uh, to uh, a university there mm -hmm. and uh, somehow they have uh, started to work. Uh, what do you, th how do you think that the, I mean, people like you and uh, let's say academics <laughs> or intellectuals can be helpful in this connection, I mean, to, let's say, to uh, advance the education in the uh, Rojava? Um. I think that um, it's a, there's a, um, in the, the, ac the academy in Kamishlo, I know, was, was, re was asking for people to donate books. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if the Afrin Academy is asking for the same thing, but maybe that would also, that would be important. Um, I think it's important to also respect the work that is being done to uncover, for example, Middle Eastern history, to mm. uncover women's history in the Middle East, to uncover the important traditions of the Middle East, and find ways that, be, that, that they, can, they, can, they can speak to traditions in other parts of the world. My understanding is that in Kamishlo, that's what the university there was trying to do, and I believe that I, I would expect the, the same in Afrin, although I don't know specifically about yeah. that place because I wasn't there. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, um, I mean, uh, in the uh, this solidarity work, how it must be evolved like, according, because, you know, there are also in this case of other movements in the world, so there has been a solidarity work sometimes. It has continued uh, when the uh, situations have been tense and then it had died down. But in the case of, uh, let's say, Rojava, bearing in mind what the big dis uh, destruction which happened in 
uh, Kobani, but uh, now Kobani is a very well-known word in, I think, mm -hmm. world over. So what uh, do you think about the solidarity wor work that to be continuous in some way? I think, I think uh, there's, uh, the, the solidarity work has involved a lot of pressuring, uh, demonstrating in front of Turkish consulates and Turkish embassies and protesting Turkey's moves. But more than that, it's, I think it, the, the support for Rojava doesn't die away because it's a model. People see it as a model or an example for how an alternative society can be created. And as you know now, in Europe, there's a terrible austerity programs being instituted and, and people are looking for alternative ways to organize society. There's a resurgence of the left, and again, it's a post-Marxist left, the resurgence of a left that's interested in radical assemblies and in ecology and Rojava is extremely important as a, as a model or as an example for how this can be done. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think there's a lot of interchange now. The, fasc there's a, the fascination with Rojava is, is continuing even in, in between specific incidents that, you, that people might protest. So this year will be the presidential election in the United States. Do you think that the, uh, for instance, uh, I mean if a new administration came to power, Will be any change in their policy vis-a-vis, -vis, for instance, Rojava? I'm sorry, we haven't heard too much about their about their attitude towards Rojava yeah. or, or, or towards the Kurds because of so much nonsense that's being spoken. Um, I haven't heard much much about foreign policy coming from any of them. But normally, I mean, when you are uh, just following uh, the let's say daily press briefing in yeah. the uh, U.S. Department of State, so. It's uh, in the c answer to the question of the journalists, mostly people, also they are the very courageous people, that's all. I mean, yeah. th th there is no mention about the rights of these people who are living no, there. No, I think Seni Muhammad and Sina Muhammad and and I, uh, Ilham Ahmed, Ilham Ahmed, Ilham yes. Ahmed yes. were recently in, in Washington United, just yes. last week asking for more U.S. aid and trying yeah. to get more firm commitments. Yeah. And and I think there there is um, the, the kind of aid that they were asking for was not forthcoming, but there's also, I think, a firm, um, the, U the United States, um, um, uh, was it um, CENTCOM, someone from CENTCOM, yeah. military people were meeting with the SDF yes. um, in recent days. Yeah, and, uh, I think and, one of the... And, and, tried and, and firming up the connection, the military connection. High-ranking general who was yes. in Kobani, yes? Yes, yes. firming up the yeah. military. And Brent Gork has been there, a yeah. State Department man has been there for yeah. um, several times. Yeah. And there's a, the de I think the military commitment is becoming stronger. Yeah. But anything beyond that, yeah, I don't see. Yeah. And but it, it's encouraging that they're willing to defy Turkey, Turkey's wishes yes. uh, in this beca respect, because Turkey would like the U.S. administration to regard the, YP, the PYD as an extension of the PKK, as the same, as identical as and as terrorists. Yeah. yeah. But the United States refuses this, so I'm very happy about that. Yeah. So. But uh, I mean, uh, if we come back to the, for instance, the atmosphere, the let's say, the academic circles in the United States, I mean, the, mm, representing the people, I mean, uh, what is the, do you think that their, their role should be in this connection, I mean, in solidarity with the people of Rojava? Oh, boy, we're trying very hard to, to bring yeah. it to the news, but it's very hard to break through yeah. in the mainstream media. Yeah. yeah. There have been a few articles. There was one in the uh, Sunday New York Times Magazine last fall, Huffington Post by Akbar Shahid Ahmed wrote mm -hmm. a wonderful article about uh, democratic confederalism in Rojava. Yeah. And, but it's, so it's, it's in, been in a few places, but it hasn't taken hold in the consciousness of Americans that there's this new phenomenon going on, except in, in you know, solidarity circles and in leftist circles. Yeah. So. This program uh, will be uh, broadcast later, but I think uh, t you are here in Belgium to speak in the uh, uh, free uh, university, free university, or somewhere. Uh, what are you going to talk about? I'm going um, to talk about. Yes. I'm going to talk about the things about Bukshin and Erdogan and democratic confederalism and Rojava. Um, it, it is organized by whom? This. Uh, um, it's organized by, I believe, by the um, uh, decroissance, the yes. obsession de croissance, uh, the degrowth people, yes. Yes. Um, who are trying to, trying to, uh, it's a, um, a, a, against growth for its own sake, it's, and it's an ecologically aware, an ecologically aware group. Yeah, um, and then yeah. you continue to Spain later on? Huh? I continue to uh, Madrid, yeah. Barcelona, yeah. Uh, Montpellier, and Lyon. Okay, yes. thank you very much for your uh, uh, guesting our program. I hope uh, you will be. Uh, successful in your life and in your works. Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed. Thank you for inviting me.
بینرانی خوشویست بم پی دگه این کتایی ام برنامه ام جرشمان هی وادارم که او چاو پی کتن دگل برز جانت بیل کلچی خویه بوبه تاکو راوژه که دیکه لای او من خوشم